Hello Sagittarius. So I've got the cards laid out here and um, I'm going to go into this spread in a little bit. Um, I'm going to first of all relay the information that came through when I was shuffling the cards initially and then we'll go into this reading. Okay, so just keep in mind this is the same spread that I've been using for you know the majority of this year. Um, it looks different because you know the deck is different but it's basically four clusters here, three uh, advice cards. And um, these cards are smaller, so they fit on screen. So I feel like it's easier to just uh, implement this new technique when I, I use this card, uh, when I use this uh, deck anyways. So first of all, I want to wish you all a very, very happy birthday for those of you born in the later part of November. I apologize for the long delay in getting this video out. And um, I've been feeling under the weather, so you know I try to minimize the recording because it is very draining. So I apologize, you guys. Um, so let's just go into your reading here. Um, one of the first things that I feel coming through is um, I feel like there's an energy here of a lot of legal paperwork, uh, official documents, things like that, like very uh, detail-oriented type of things that you're supposed to do, kind of like following up with people, playing phone tag, waiting on decisions from one person, which allows you to, you know, know where to proceed. So I feel it's kind of like, you know, a series of things that you that have to be like lined up perfectly in order for you to like figure out what you need to do, where you need to go, who you need to talk to, and it's a little bit frustrating. So I feel you entering um, this month, and I do see, you know, the 5th, the six or something like that being a series of frustrations but you know these are like minor things but I feel like it affects you more mainly because you're a fire sign you want results you want things to be you know uh, c very clear cut like black or white so that you can move forward so I feel like in that manner these are minor things that are happening happening on the periphery of your life but I feel like it frustrates you and um, so that's what I feel coming through from the 5th, the 6th onward, okay? If not already, it might have happened the end of no, uh, October. And as a result of it, you're carrying the residual energy and things are just not getting, you know, resolved in a quick, efficient, and swift manner. So it's a lot of it has to do with like waiting on other people and other people frustrate you. And um, I feel like official people, people that are in a position of authority to, you know, move things along for you. And I feel, honestly, they might not just be doing their job. There, there are inefficiencies here when it comes to institutions, okay? A governmental institution, educational institution, uh, hospitals, clerks, people that are in some type of administrative role, not really up on their game, not really doing their job. So it's frustrating. Um, just stay calm, do some meditation, and I know these are, you know, uh, minor band-aids to the issue, but I feel like it's, you, you have to really um, push for specific outcome. You have to really push things along. They're not going to move along unless you push for it, so I feel like that's where you're supposed to go, but at the same time, it's going to be a little bit irritating. So, you know, keep yourself calm, keep yourself centered. So I feel like there's a lot of frustrations coming through. Um, on the other end of the spectrum, I feel like, so, so you know, those, um, those things, those annoyances are kind of like on the periphery of your overall existence. So, yes, they are irritating, but they're, they're minor, okay? So don't, um, don't feel like that's something that's going to occupy like a majority of your time. So I feel like they're minor. The other thing I'm feeling here is that um, there is something that is making you quite happy and quite grounded. It could be a person or it could just be, you know, getting, finally getting some traction, getting good news. I feel some resolutions, um, long awaited resolutions. And I feel that coming through from institutions as well. And that's going to be like towards the end of the month. And I feel like, you know, when the sun shifts into your constellation, that's when things are going to really move for you in a very positive manner. So just be patient until then. I do see some resolutions when it comes to health issues for some of you. If you're dealing with it yourself or you're dealing with it within other people. And I do feel mental health for some of you, um, such as, you know, getting some type of, um, uh, getting, it's like, 
it's like I, I almost feel like somebody you know getting some help health wise if they're they're dealing with some type of depression or they might have you know personality disorder somebody's getting some help as well as um, physical health I do feel some resolution as to you know you you know what you need to do and uh, you at least have some type of a proper diagnosis so that you can move ahead okay um, I'm also feeling this sense of um, I feel you feeling a little bit isolated so that means um, I, I do feel like, you know, uh, I, I see some of you who are starting new relationships, kind of like cocooning yourself, like um, you and whoever you're dealing with, um, you, you both are uh, having a lot of like alone time without other people, which is great. Um, I feel some of you might be doing it because it's a clandestine relationship. And then others might just be, you know, very swept off your feet and you want to spend as much time alone with your significant other. So I do feel this element of like rejuvenation in love relationships, realizing who's important for you, who has been there for you. And, you know, taking, a, a, spending a lot of alone time with like significant people in your life, okay, which is nice. Um, let me see what else I saw earlier. There was a message here. Um... There's something about like peace offering. So it's sort of like making peace with either yourself. So they're saying like a, a peace offering. And I feel like it, it doesn't really pertain to other people. It can. But I feel like it's more like kind of like that whole acceptance stage. Because I feel like the beginning of the month, everything was really up in the air. And you're waiting for like either good news, bad news, or so, just some type of a resolution so that you can know how to proceed and then I feel like whatever it's it's not really the news it's the anticipation that makes you feel really nervous um, scared and kind of you know anxious it, it's the anxious like everything up in the air anxious feeling and I feel like the 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 later part of the month is going to allow you to come to peace with things. So that means coming into a, a term of accepting something, accepting the situation for what it is, not pushing so hard to change a specific outcome because you're accepting it. So I feel this, you know, overwhelming sense of peace washing over you. There is going to be contentment as well. I do see that here in the advice card. So uh, that's what I'm sensing for this month. So it starts out very emotional and then, you know, it's um, it's going to peter out and it's going to be a lot more stable, okay? So let's go into your reading here. One of the uh, first thing that came out here is the Ace of Cups as well as the Knight of Cups. Um, I feel for some of you, this is a burst of new love, new relationships, new crushes, new invigoration of feelings for, for some a person in your life. And the Ace of Cups, um, I do feel that, you know, it has the, it's like the Aces are always seeds. And with seeds, you have to nurture it, you have to foster it, you have to cultivate it in order for it to grow. So this is kind of like a blessing that is handed to you. Uh, by the universe and what you do with it is going to dictate the trajectory of you know where it's headed and I feel for a lot of you it li is linked up here with a water sign a Pisces a Cancer or a Scorpio Sun Moon or rising sign and um, the thing about this is um, we have the potential here to start something to foster a relationship now keep in mind you are a fire sign and you're dealing with a water sign energy, somebody who's quite sensitive. Um, I do feel somebody with chiseled feature, quite handsome. So, um, you know, it could be male or female. But I feel like very, you know, classically handsome or beautiful is what I'm, I'm feeling. Chiseled feature and, um, uh, you know, possibly pale skin, but not always. But I feel like, you know, it, it's somebody that is... Um, that will meet you halfway. They're very, they're very uh, innocent. They're very like, um, they're not vindictive. I don't feel uh, vindictiveness coming through from this card. And I also feel like, you know, it's, it's the beginning of something where you both are getting to know one another. So once again, we have something that is very, very beautiful coming through. And uh, what you decide to do with it is pretty much up to you. You can nurture it, you can ignore it, but whatever it is, I feel that it's going to be 
a very positive healing experience for you. Um, going back to what I started to talk about, um, you are a fire sign and you're dealing with water energy. So there's a lot of opposition, you know, it, it's sort of like, uh, if you were to look at, you know, NATO astrology chart between you and that person, there would be a lot of oppositions and it brings a lot of excitement. It brings a lot of like, um, the energy is not, it, it's like the relationship. I feel like there's something here where it has a lot of potential, but there's some elements of, um, difficulty surrounding it as well. For whatever reason, it could just be that you both are very different people. You both are at different stations in your life right now. Um, the other person might be a lot more needy than you are. Like, um, not in a bad way, but they might need a lot more reassurance. They're not as strong. They're not as, um, I would say, like, they're not as sure of themselves. And they're not aggressive. And I feel that, you know, Sagittarius is a masculine sign. So even Sagittarian women tend to be a little bit more uh, uh, impatient, tend to be a little bit more of a go-getter, you know, take charge type of person. So I feel that, you know, there's an element here of like possibly a role reversal. If you are a female dealing with a male or even if you are like a, a male energy, there's some element here of like very, very intense yin yang energy where you both complement each other. But there, um, there are still a lot of differences between the two of you. Differences are not always bad, but it requires a lot of wisdom, a lot of like, um, a lot of insight to make this relationship solid, okay? So it requires a lot of work, you know, as in agriculture, as in farming. Whenever you start to grow something, it requires continuing care. But as with all relationships, we can't really sit back and, and you know, expect things to take off on their own. Some relationships can, but I feel like with this one, it requires a little bit more work, but the payout can be tremendously rewarding, okay? So um, I feel some of you have this person coming into your life, Sun, Moon, or Rising, male or female, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. And um, this is somebody with a lot of insights. So I feel like they they might even have psychic abilities. They might be highly, highly intuitive. Uh, they might also be just, you know, like they, they've been around the block and I feel like they don't offer their love very, very uh, easily. So I feel that they are trying to get to know you. They see... They are attracted to you because I feel like they, they see you as someone who's very independent, as somebody who's very like uh, self-contained in control. So they like these, I, I feel like they, they think that you are very, very confident and competent. So I feel like they're attracted to you because of that, because I feel like they are lacking in these skills, possibly within themselves, okay? Um, so it's a it's a situation where you know you you attract your complement like there are great complementarities between the interaction between the two of you because of just the nature of you know who you are who they are and you both can grow but it requires a lot of self awareness so it's not like an easy you know passionate thing that's going to take off without any snags along the way it's going to require um. I feel quite a bit of work, actually, quite a bit of work, quite a bit of self-awareness from both parties to make things work, okay? Um, <clears throat> what I'm also feeling here is, um, for those of you who are dealing with health issues, the Ace of Cups and the Knight of Cups can also indicate some type of medical regimen that you're going to have to uh, uh, take in order to treat something, and I feel like for some of you, it has high potential of curing whatever it is. It has high probability and high potential, okay? Um, I feel like some of you might be um, signing some type of waiver, some type of disclosure in order to start this treatment. And I feel like if you haven't already, there is a treatment started sometime this month. If not, it might have started like the beginning, uh, I'm sorry, the end of uh, the previous month, October. So there's something starting now that is going to help your health uh, significantly, okay? So I do see a lot of, um, you know, the start to healing something for many of you, which is great energy. If these two cards are falling out at the beginning, then it, it indicates to me some really great energy is coming through. Um, going back to what I mentioned about a peace offering, I feel like... Um, 
you might be doing this to another person. This is also indicative of a peace offering. It's sort of like, you know, let bygones be bygones because we care about each other. So uh, let's just agree to disagree and move forward. So that peace offering coming through from another person, I feel for a majority of you, it's coming from your end to another person. And um, I do sense that the other person, um, I'm looking at this here. And I sense that the other person is very hesitant. So what it seems to me is like this. It's, it's like whatever, whoever you're dealing with, right? And I don't feel for a lot of you, it's going to be love relationships. I feel like it's other people that you might have had falling out with. Or there might have been some type of estrangement between you and them. Um, and what you're doing here is that, you know, the Ace of Cups. I, I see it as like unconditional love, you know, and that reminds me of family members. Because those are the, the relationships that really test our ability to love somebody. So I feel for some of you, if you're reaching out to family members, for example, and you're trying to make amends, whoever you're reaching out to, I feel like they're a little bit skeptical. So they're going to be like, you know, I'll believe it when I see it. Or they're going to give you some type of... Um, I feel like they're, they're going to give you some type of like... Um, guidelines you know it's sort of like okay well you say you're sorry I need proof or they're gonna say like um, if you if you if you want to maintain this relationship with me here's what we need to do so they're gonna give you you know some some papers with like guidelines as how to both parties can conduct themselves you know they're gonna lay out some clear guidelines as to how to proceed and how to work together as a unit so I feel that coming through okay um, peace offering is always nice and I feel like if that's something that you need to do if it's something you've been thinking about definitely reach out because I feel like the, the outcome is going to be quite positive it's always good to mend relationships okay it's always good to do so and life is honestly too short so don't hold these grudges and just try to mend whatever relationship um, that you can okay uh, what's coming through with the second cluster here is the high priestess and the three of pentacles First of all, the Three of Pentacles, let's talk about this first, because I feel like, I feel like for some of you, there is a situation here where you're trying to work together with another person, and everyone has their own agendas, right? And I feel like you're, you're working together with them, and you see the, the value, like the long-term, um, the, the long-term impact of the work that you're doing, right? And I feel like they're very short-sighted. They only see what they're contributing. They only see how this situation is going to contribute to their own success. So I feel like there is this thing about, you know, long-term vision, which I feel you're very good at seeing because, you know, your sign is ruled by Jupiter. It deals with higher uh, vibrations, higher ideals, as well as, you know, philosophical, like, expansion. And it's also ruled, uh, rules the ninth, ninth house in astrology, which deals with higher education, higher learning, higher consciousness. And it's linked up with the high priestess too. So I feel like, um, I feel like if you're in a capacity where you are working with other people, you might be supervising other people. You might be, you know, in charge of other people. And whatever they're doing, it, they're doing, you're seeing them make mistakes. You're seeing them like losing themselves in the details and not seeing the big picture. And I feel like you might have tried several times to talk to them about this. And I do feel like, you know, they, they're, they're kind of ambivalent. They just don't really care. And they don't, they're a little bit short-sighted. So I feel like there's going to be some minor frustration here coming through in the work environment. The High Priestess also indicates a situation where, you know, truths being coming to light, truths being revealed in a work environment here and it might be that you know some some people might not have the proper training in order to do something and though these things are going to slip out and so when that comes to light right if you're in a position of authority then you're going to have to decide do do we expend the money and the time and the resources to train them or do we just fire them and replace them so there are some difficult decisions that you're going to have to grapple with, especially for those of you in, in a capacity where you can hire or fire and you are dealing with this. 
So people's competencies or lack of competencies are going to be revealed. And um, you need to figure out, you know, what you, you have to do about that, okay? And I feel like don't try to hide it. Don't try to, you know, cover for them. Because I feel like a lot of you are there. I feel like the people are working in a capacity where it like one weak chain, one weak link, I guess, in a chain is going to cause a lot of problems for everybody involved. So if you're realizing this about a specific person, you need to, you know, bring it to action. Mainly because they're a weak link and they're, if you're b building something, you know, a weak structure cannot withstand the test of time. So think about long term. So don't try to, you know, um, baby or call this person. That's not going to work. You need to like be a little bit more, you, you need to be a little bit more objective and be a little bit more detached when dealing with this situation and try to do the right thing. I hope that makes sense. So Sagittarius, some tough calls for, for a lot of you. Um, likewise, if you are kind of like working in the capacity any time for this month, okay? If you are not uh, sure about what you're doing, take a step back and don't do it. Consult somebody for advice. If, you're, if, if you feel like, hey, I'm not really comfortable doing this because I don't really know how to do it, Ask somebody, do some research, and make sure you know what you're doing, okay? Because I feel like, you know, things slipping out, things coming to light, and there might be some reprimand if you're, if you're like, working under somebody else, and there might be, you know, like, um, a reprimand based on your job performance. So keep that in mind as well, okay? Um, I do feel here with the third cluster, we have the five of cups as well as the six of cups. So let me just say that um, this is going to uh, pan out in two ways. The, the first one is that there is a significant relationship in your life, okay? So this is, um, the Six of Cups is a soulmate type of a connection where you feel emotionally very tied in with another person. In the negative manifestation of it, it could also be like, um, you're stuck with a person because you both have something together. That can be finances, that can be children together, and you have to learn to work together as a unit. And it's really frustrating. It, what I feel here with the Five of Cups is that a lot of you might have fall, had a falling out with somebody that you really, really cared about, okay? And you thought you could trust them, you thought that the relationship was going to go the distance, and I feel like it didn't pan out exactly that way. And then you might have realized that, you know, you were idealizing the relationship. You were idealizing that situation and looking at it through kind of like rose tinted glasses. And the, the, the reality starts to set in sometime this month. And then for others of you, um, you know, going back to the peace offering between family members, especially if you have children, it might be, uh, overturn that peace offering in fact the other person might not accept it so the thing here is you know the whole process about acceptance you can be the one to extend a peace offering but if the other person is not ready to accept it it is their call so you know don't get upset over it okay likewise if somebody is extending a, a peace offering to you you don't need to be nice. If you feel like you still hold a grudge, just tell them, thank you, but I'm not ready. Or, you know, if you feel like, no, what you did was, you know, unforgivable, then definitely express that. But just know that, you know, it is within somebody's power to either deny or accept what's coming in. And likewise for yourself, it is within your power to decide, you know, your own destiny. So, I feel like whatever's coming through, there is going to be, you know, some, there might be some disappointment for some of you regarding mending relationships with somebody, mending ties with somebody. And I feel for a lot of you, uh, especially, you know, uh, Sagittarius parents, people who have children, there might be some lingering attachments here with um, baby's father, um or like the, the mother of their child and uh, there's going to have to be some situation where you have to come back together to work together as a unit. 
um, there might also be like, you know, so for example, if you're separated, right, you're no longer with the baby's father, and um, they've met somebody else, they're, you know, the, that, that third person is going to be in the picture raising the child too. And likewise, if you're a Sagittarius man with children, and your, your ex, you know, the, the, the mother of the child, might be dating again, so there's that other man in, involved in the picture, so I feel like, it's a tenuous situation, you know, it's like extended family, blended families, people dating again with children. So all of these things are thrown in the mix and it's sort of like you don't know where the other person has been. So you're just like, do I trust them with the children? So there are all these nuance, you know, relationships coming through, partners coming and going. And at the root of it, I feel like there are also children involved. So I feel like it's a, a sticky situation. And the thing is, you can't really control who other people date. So pick your battles and at least, you know, um, I feel like getting the story from children is, is going to be crucial as well, okay? Just make sure the kids are happy. This is more about, you know, trying to provide a stable environment for the kids. So if your ex is happy and they've got like other people in the mix, if they're happy and their children are, are safe, then you're, you're fine. So I feel like that's going to be a little bit of a tenuous situation for those of you who have children who are trying to date again or who are, you know, going through the dating process. And likewise, the baby's mother, the baby's father uh, might be trying to date as well. So I, I feel like it's, you know, it's a little bit tricky, but it will be okay. I, I do feel that it will be okay. Um, what I'm also feeling is like there might be some custody issues when it comes to children, okay, so rearrangement of custody issues, rearrangement of meeting times, um, of like who gets the child when and what days, and then I feel like, you know, co going back to court in order to like do a review when it comes to custody, alimony, child support. So all of that's coming through, and I feel like it might have been settled, there might be like a an amendment that is needed for it, and then I feel, you know, you, you you're going to have to decide what you want to, how you want to proceed, okay? Uh, the last cluster here is the Seven of Pentacles as well as the Two of Swords. So first of all, let me talk about the Seven of Pentacles. The Seven of Pentacles indicates a situation where you are in, you have invested a lot of time in a specific situation and you're waiting for a very favorable outcome, you're waiting for the reward, you're waiting for the payoff. And um, I feel like a lot of you might be feeling very, very frustrated and kind of like jaded because I feel like something similar happened to you last year where you put a lot of your time in a situation. You waited for things to, you know, um, work out well for you and you might have been disappointed. And I feel like you're obsessively grooming and um, making sure that this time around things are going to be perfectly um, per, like perfect or even like you know you're you're making sure everything is is where it's supposed to be everything is in place dotting all the t uh, i's and crossing all your t's and I feel like the waiting game you know so I feel a lot of you are turning in documents a lot of you are kind of like um, there might be children in the picture the other party is submitting their documents you're submitting yours and then there's like this waiting as to you know a final decision here so the two of swords is a situation where our intuition is telling us there is something off okay and some of you might be you know looking at the situation like there's something off here and you need to really look into it and you really need to like figure out, you know, why is my intuition telling me that, um, why, why am I thinking about these things? Why is my intuition like telling me, you know, all these things that might, um, possibly happen. So this is a, a month in which, you know, take off those rose tinted glasses and look at the situation very, very realistically. Okay. Oftentimes when I see this card, especially with this deck, I think about denial and I usually think about like, you know, your intuition is telling you something, but you're blindfolded. You're, you're protecting yourself because um, the truth hurts. The truth really does hurt sometimes. So I feel like, you know, Ali, um, that's what I'm hearing. And I heard this message once for uh, the Aquarius reading. 
it says a victory over a wider water sign. So Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. So we have here the Eight of Swords, the Six of Wands, and the Knight of Cups. Um, I do feel in the past position, you were in a situation where you didn't know where to go, where to turn. You kept yourself stuck in a very, very tenuous, possibly a difficult situation. You try to keep, keep things afloat. You try to stay optimistic and you try to, you know, hang in there as long as you can. A lot of you were involved with a water sign, a Pisces, Cancer, or Scorpio. And I definitely feel that a lot of you might have, um, either gotten out of this situation and broken things off and, and, and you know, started to live your life as a single person all over again, okay? And then for others of you, there might have been a situation where you felt like you it was hard for you to go out and meet high-quality people, and then you recently met somebody that is a Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, Sun, Moon, or Rising. This is new. And I feel like this person really boosts your self-esteem. This person makes you feel really, really good all over again. And as a result of it, I feel like you're able to move forward with a lot of, like, optimism, with a, a high, you know, like, uh, high hopes, high aspirations for the future, and especially trying to create a future for the both of you together as a unit, okay? So those are the two scenarios. Which brings us to the present situation. First of all, um, we have the Temperance card, and the Temperance card is coming through to remind you not to overindulge in a relationship. At the beginning of new relationships, it's always like, um, you know, it's always that honeymoon, that puppy love stage where you can't get enough of somebody. And this is a card about moderation. This is a card about, you know, separating your personal life from your private life. I'm sorry, personal life from other areas of your life. So finding that right balance. Um, not cocooning too much, spending so much of your time and neglecting your personal responsibilities, your professional responsibilities, or even your friends and family, okay? So try to do, try to do things in moderation. What's also coming through is the two of coins, which indicates like a, a financial situation where you might not, you might feel like a, a physical financial lack so that you are entertaining each other more at home or you might feel almost as if you are financially lacking in some way in order to you know uh, go out and, and start dating so a lot of you might just be really really inundated with a lot of work or you are trying to get your financial situation in order so you know dating and things like that is not even on the agenda so even if you might have met somebody new that is potentially a water sign you're still trying to juggle um, between, you know, possibly between some type of separation, dividing up assets, you know, trying to figure out how much you really have and things like that. So I feel financial considerations um, are preventing you from really dating and having that vibrant, robust dating life that you're hoping for. What I'm also feeling as well is there might be uh, thoughts about, you know, voyage, travel and things like that to see one another. So there might be distance, there might be a lot of communication where uh, I feel like, you know, you're trying to get to know each other as well, but underlying it here is finances and things like that between you and your partner or between you and the new person that you've met that you need to sort out in your own respective lives before the relationship can take off, okay? For those of you who have, you know, broken out of a uh, bad relationship in the past where you felt stuck, I feel like you're getting your financial situation sorted out right now. So dating is really not on the agenda. Of course, we all want love, but I feel like, you know, right now you're very busy. You're, you're, you're trying to keep everything afloat. So I feel like you might be excluding yourself from the dating exper experience mainly because of that. Okay. So the foundation is the thing that we, on which, you know, everything else is built. We have the four of wands the Seven of Cups, and the Page of Swords. Um, the Page of Swords indicates like some type of communication news coming through regarding the viability of a relationship, okay? So first of all, for those of you who are coupled up, with the Four of Wands, this is a family marriage type of an institutional card. 
The seven of cups indicates temptation. It indicates like, uh, you know, flirtations and things like that. Temptation coming through from the external environment. So a lot of you might be married. And there is some type of um, an air sign, an Aquarius, a Gemini, or a Libra. That is, I guess, like flirting with you, your partner. There's some type of temptation, some type of like... Um, situation where somebody is being tempted to step out of a relationship so that's coming through quite clearly and then for other so what I feel is for a lot of you you might be eyeing somebody you might be socially dating them they have a lot of suitors and then you might achieve a victory here where you get their undivided attention okay and then for others of you I feel like you're if you've got this person, you might be taking things to the next level. There's a lot of, you know, positive energies here. And we have the chariot card, which is another victory card, which means that the next phase of it is the major arcana, which means you both are trying to work together as a unit to build something together. So what I'm feeling, especially for those of you who are, you know, single and dating, if you are financially in flux right now, it's probably not a good time for you to start dating because I do see a lot of blockages physically preventing you from you know really going out and you know just um, um, socializing a lot and I feel as well this five of pentacles is a situation where you are being solicited to go out but I feel that the the financial situation might not be at its best right now additionally you might have you know two people that are vying for your affection so I feel an energy of a water sign, a Pisces, a Cancer, or a Scorpio. And then I feel an energy of an air sign, so an Aquarius, a Gemini, or a Libra. And what I'm feeling is this. You have the two of pentacles, which means, you know, juggling two options. So I feel like a lot of you might be cocooning in the house, you know, spending date nights with one person because you don't want to be seen as, you know, um, dating two people. So I feel like that element coming through, some type of clandestine operation happening from the Sagittarius' um, view because I, I feel like there's a water sign, there's an air sign. And then for others of you, I feel like you're, you know, you're, you're trying to get a hold on your finances and as a result, the, the uh, going out, socializing, things like that might not be available to you. So what I'm sensing here is you have, you know, um, you have suitors, air sign and water sign. And then we have, like, uh, for those of you who have recently met a water sign in the very recent past, this person is making you feel quite good. They are, it's a lighthearted, good relationship. I feel that. Um, it's actually very positive. A lot of you might be taking trips to go see this person. They might be taking trips to come see you. And I feel like, you know, it's going to work out really well because I feel that the communication is very strong between the two parties, meaning everything is discussed, no one's really kept in the dark, and no one feels like they're left out, okay? So overall, good energies. Be careful about clandestine relationships. If you are juggling options, just, um, I don't feel anything about getting caught. I don't sense that, but I feel that, you know, just for the, the person that you're dating, just for their sake, you should decide who you want to be with because this juggling act seems a little bit exhausting, okay? So, Sagittarius, I wish you all the best. Um, once again, enjoy your birthday and enjoy um, Thanksgiving. For those of you who are celebrating and who are living in the States, enjoy Thanksgiving. Spend some time with family. And um, if you'd like a private reading,